Hello, my name is Madison, and I'm 34 years old. When I was growing up, my biggest dream was to be a journalist or work with magazines. I loved writing and was good at keeping up with trends. So it wasn't surprising that I decided to study journalism and media in college. After I graduated, I worked for several companies, but none of them were the big famous ones. I didn't mind because I was doing what I had always dreamed of. Eventually, I got a job at a pretty big company and felt like I had finally made it. A few years after I graduated college, when I was about 28, I met my husband, Scott. Scott's family was pretty wealthy and had their own business. I'm mentioning this because his mother, Trisha, always disliked me and insulted me. She thought I wasn't good enough for him and that I shouldn't have married him. Scott and I dated for about three years before we decided to get married. As I mentioned, Scott's mom, Trisha, didn't like me. She always put me down and made fun of me for working at a magazine and having a journalism degree. At first, her behavior really hurt me because no one should be treated like that. But for some reason, Trisha thought it was okay to treat me that way. Scott always defended me against his mother. His dad, Fred, also stood up for me whenever he heard Trisha's remarks. I was thankful for both of them. As time went on, I started to get used to Trisha's insults. Scott even suggested that we limit contact with her. But I didn't agree. Scott worked with his dad, and if he stopped talking to his mom, it could make things awkward for Fred. Fred was a wonderful person, and I didn't want to put him in a tough spot. I also didn't want Scott to cut off his family because of me. I learned to deal with it mostly because we only saw Trisha twice a month at most. But things changed when Fred had to go overseas for a business project. Trisha didn't want to be alone, so Scott and I agreed to let her stay with us until Fred returned. I had a bad feeling about it, but I believed that family should always come first. Living with Trisha was really tough. She constantly nitpicked and criticized everything I did, and the insults never seemed to stop. But I could handle all of that as long as she didn't actually harm me. However, everything changed during one week that turned out to be really difficult. I had a major presentation coming up at work. We were redesigning a section of our magazine, and I was responsible for making it great. This presentation was crucial because it would determine if I got a promotion, but Trisha didn't understand why it was so important. I don't think knowing would have changed her opinion of me anyway. Since Trisha was staying with us, she saw how stressed I was about it. The night before my big presentation, I was talking to Scott about how nervous I felt when she overheard us. She walked into the living room and decided to share her thoughts. This is a big deal. All the top bosses will be watching me. I can't imagine how scary this must be for you. I'm glad you had it easier with your business, but this is such a different game. I'm so scared of messing everything up. Don't say that. You'll do great. I wish I could believe that. I just feel so unsure of everything. What if I mess up the presentation? I couldn't help but overhear you both talking. Mom, we're having a private conversation. Well, Madison. I just wanted to say that you have nothing to worry about. You probably don't have the skills for this, so you'll probably do badly tomorrow. Excuse me? Just treat it as a chance to quit your job and be a housewife. Then maybe you'll be good enough for my son. I can't believe he married a journalist. Mom, you're crossing a line. Leave. You know what? I don't have time for your nonsense, Trisha. I have bigger things to worry about than your opinion of me and my relationship with your son. How dare you talk to me like that? So it's fine for you to talk to me that way, but not the other way around. Scott, say something. Your wife is disrespecting your mother. She's just standing up for herself. I don't see anything wrong with it. She's manipulating you. Look at how easily you can turn your back on family. Madison will regret this. I was furious at Trisha for barging into Scott's and my conversation and insulting me so blatantly. Scott tried to apologize for his mother's behavior, but I stopped him. He wasn't responsible for her hurtful words. After that, we decided to call it a night and went to sleep. I was too focused on everything else to even think about Trisha's threat towards me. I figured she would just continue tormenting me, which, honestly, I didn't care about at that moment. Dealing with her could wait until after my presentation. The next day, I hurried into work with my laptop, ready for my presentation. But when I opened it, I realized something was terribly wrong. All the files on my desktop were gone, and my laptop had been reset. I started to panic. I had emailed the presentation to myself, so I tried to calm down. But when I logged into my email, 
I saw that all my emails were deleted, even from the trash. My heart sank and tears filled my eyes. I felt an overwhelming fear. I had to explain everything to my boss, who was not happy. He yelled at me for a while before telling me not to bother with the presentation because he had someone else do it in case I messed up. I knew then that any chance for me to advance in the company was gone. I couldn't believe this was happening. I rushed home in tears. Scott hadn't left for work yet, and when he saw me, he took the day off to be with me. He held me as I cried, and when I calmed down a bit, he asked me what happened. What's wrong, honey? Did the presentation not go well? There was no presentation, at least not one that I gave. Huh? What do you mean? You put so much effort into preparing for it. You hardly slept those past few days because you were working so hard. I know, but when I got there, I opened my laptop and found out that everything had been deleted. What? How did that happen? I don't know. It was really embarrassing and humiliating to have to explain it to my boss. Wait, did you not back it up somewhere else? Yeah, I emailed it to myself, but even my inbox and trash were emptied. Oh my god, I'm so sorry this happened. What did your boss say? He yelled at me a lot, called me unprofessional and lazy. He had someone else do the presentation. But you still have your job, right? Yeah, but I'm stuck in this position. I can't move up or get promoted. I'm done here. Don't worry, honey. You'll find a better job. I'll be here for you through it all. Just keep working here until you're ready to leave. Yeah, I'll give my notice now. I can't believe I worked so hard for this, and just when I was close, it slipped away. I felt really down after that. I take pride in doing well on my projects, so what happened was really tough for me. It was traumatic, to say the least. I wasn't given any more important work at my job. I held off on quitting, but after another week, I knew it was time. I handed in my notice and waited for my time to be up. Through it all, Trisha seemed strangely happy. She saw me crying once and made remarks about how she knew I would fail. At first, I was mad at her. But then I started thinking about her behavior. Maybe she was happy because she thought I would finally become a housewife. Or maybe she was happy because she had something to do with my career falling apart. I can't quite explain it, but I had this gut feeling that Trisha had something to do with my laptop troubles. I wanted to talk to Scott about it, but I needed evidence first. So I decided to set up a hidden camera in the office to catch Trisha in the act. I ordered a camera disguised as a smoke detector and installed it on the ceiling. I connected it to my phone and got ready to implement my plan. The next step was to somehow let Trisha know about my upcoming presentation. That wasn't too hard. I just paced around the office looking worried. Scott was still at work, unaware of what I was doing. Trisha noticed my anxious behavior and asked what was going on. What's wrong? Are you stressed about another project? Shah, I need to tell someone. Since you asked, I've been given another chance to present my work, and it could lead to a raise. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm really nervous because this is my last chance to get things right, and I have to do it well. Why aren't you telling Scott? Is it because you're embarrassed about your job? No, it's because I don't want to disappoint him again. Just keep it between us, okay? I'm not promising anything, but it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. Why do you always want me to fail? I just think you'd be better off as a housewife. It's less embarrassing than what you're doing now. I don't have time for this, and I don't care what you think. Please leave me alone so I can practice my presentation before Scott gets home. Trisha left, but not before giving my laptop a look and smirking at me. I had a feeling something was up. I stayed in the office a little longer, only leaving when Scott came home. Trisha didn't mention my presentation, but she kept smirking at me during dinner. After we went to bed, I checked the footage from the hidden camera on my phone, keeping an eye out for any movement. Scott and I watched a few episodes of our favorite TV series as usual. There wasn't any action until midnight when Trisha entered the office. I quickly showed Scott what was happening on my phone. He seemed puzzled at first, but then he saw Trisha messing with my laptop until it shut off and restarted. Scott looked at me shocked. I explained what I had done, and he was furious with Trisha. Trisha was still in the office, snooping through my files. Scott got up and stormed into the office. He flung the door open, and Trisha looked startled when she saw him. Scott tried to stay calm and asked her what she was doing. What are you doing in here, Ma? Oh, nothing. Really? Then why is Madison's laptop still open? 
Are you accusing me of going through her stuff? I think you did more than that, Ma. Firstly, I came in here because I thought this room needed tidying up. And secondly, you know your wife isn't forgetful. She wouldn't leave her laptop open. You wanted to clean the office at midnight, and don't talk about Madison like that. Don't talk to me like that. I'm still your mother. Yeah, my mother who loves to hurt and sabotage my wife. What are you saying? We caught you on camera resetting Madison's laptop. You were spying on me? No, we just wanted to make sure that what happened to Madison wouldn't happen again. That's disgusting. How could you film me without my consent? I didn't put cameras in your room. I put one in my office, and you went in there without my permission. And even if it was wrong, it's nothing compared to what you did to Madison. I want you out of our house tomorrow. But I'll be all alone, Trisha protested. I don't care. I don't want to talk to you. The next morning, Trisha tried to delay things by helping with breakfast and washing dishes, but Scott wasn't having it. As soon as she finished, Scott came down with her bags and told her he'd packed for her and ordered her an Uber. Trisha pleaded with him to let her stay, even crying, which was unusual for her as she usually made others cry. Scott ignored her and went to our room. Trisha turned to me and started yelling, blaming me for setting her up. I told her if anyone should be yelling, it's me. She's lucky I haven't shared the footage with her friends and family. If they knew what she did to me, she'd lose them all. That shut her up pretty quickly. After Trisha left, I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders. Though I was still upset about my job situation, I knew I could bounce back and do even better. Scott was my biggest support throughout everything. Once my notice period ended, I took some time off to rest and figure out my next steps. Over the next few months, I took courses in different areas of my field. I knew if I focused on a specific niche and found the right job, I could achieve a lot more. I didn't want to expose Trisha, but after years of her putting me down, I wanted to show her what I was capable of. I wanted to reach heights even she hadn't seen. With Scott's help, I got recommendations in various places. Being wealthy also meant having many connections, which was a huge advantage. With my experience and Scott's support, I landed the role of chief editor at a major magazine known worldwide. The work was tough, but it was worth it. Somewhere along the journey to becoming chief editor, I forgot about my desire to show Trisha what I was capable of. In fact, we hadn't had any contact with her during those months. I knew Scott still spoke with his father because they worked together, but Scott hadn't heard much from or about his mother. His father, Fred, said she was upset with us about something but wouldn't say what. At least Trisha took my warning seriously, but I knew I'd have to see her eventually, and it turned out my company was throwing a huge party with lots of big names invited, including Trisha and Fred. Scott and I dressed our best because, for the first time, we were both important figures. When we arrived, Trisha and Fred spotted us and waved us over. We greeted them, and Trisha gave me a once-over before smirking. Look at you trying to fit in, she sneered. Trisha, ignore her, Madison. You look lovely, as always, Fred said kindly. Thanks, Fred. How have you been? Yeah, how's unemployment treating you? Trisha interjected. Wait, you're unemployed? Fred asked, surprised. Oh yeah, she messed up at her job, and they let her go. I've always said she's not good enough for our son. Look at her, she can't even keep a job, Trisha mocked. That's enough, Mom, Scott said sternly. Stop siding with her. It's bad enough having to see her everywhere. We wouldn't have to if you just left her like I said, Trisha insisted. Okay, that's enough. Either you stop talking or I'm leaving, Scott warned. But Madison, sweetie, if you need a job, let me know. It would be great to work with you, Fred offered sincerely. That's really kind of you, Fred, but I can't accept the offer, I replied. Of course not. I told you she's lazy and incompetent, Trisha muttered. Just then, my name was called, and people started cheering. I looked towards the small stage, and the CEO was there, waving and motioning for me to come up. I turned to Fred and Trisha, excusing myself. Fred looked amused, but Trisha seemed confused and angry. The CEO gave a speech, praising my work in the company and my ability to innovate and bring new ideas to the magazine. The audience cheered loudly, asking for a speech. I thank Scott for his support and all my colleagues who helped make the magazine what it is. I ended by thanking the one person who doubted me because their negativity pushed me to be better. As I walked off the stage, 
Everyone stopped me to congratulate me and ask about the unnamed critic, but I kept that to myself. I made my way over to the table where Fred, Trisha, and Scott were seated. Scott hugged me tightly, congratulating me, and Fred stood up to hug me too. Trisha glared at me. Oh, Madison, this is amazing. I can see why you wouldn't want to work with us. Fred said. Thanks, Fred. Although I'll admit, if you'd offered me the job about six months ago, I might have taken it. You should have. At least then you'd be paid more, Trisha smarted. Paid more. I could never put a price on this, Fred replied. Right, she's not worth all that money, Trisha scoffed. No, I mean I couldn't match what she's earning right now. What do you mean? Trisha asked, confused. Do you want me to tell her, Madison? It might come off as boasting if I say it, Fred offered. Madison makes at least five times more than I do in her current position, Fred revealed. Here. How? Oh yeah, she must be making way more than Scott or I could ever imagine, Trisha exclaimed. That can't be right. You must be mistaken, Trisha insisted. He's not mistaken, Mom. I really did mean it when I thanked you. You've been nothing but a bully to me and I hope seeing me more successful than anyone in your family stings. Anyway, I have other people to talk to. Excuse us, Trisha. Fred, feel free to join us any time. Goodbye, I said as Scott and I left a stunned Trisha at the table. Fred laughed and raised his drink to me as Scott and I walked away. I'd never felt more alive and satisfied. It was an incredible accomplishment, and I'm grateful to Scott for his support. Thanks for listening.